All right, for the future of everything, now to what might be the most consequential news of the week, of the month, or even the decade, or the century. Bear with me, I know I get a little bit stoked about this stuff, but there are two scientific papers that just dropped that absolutely blew my mind. You know, there's been so much talk about whether aliens exist. You got the UAP hearings, all those black and white military videos, drones in the sky, then obviously AI making things even more confusing. Well, for me, there are two papers that are out right now that just cut through all of the noise by going back in time and taking a look at sky survey plates from the 40s and 1940s and 1950s. Basically, these are pictures of our night sky and all the stars at night after night before humans ever sent anything into space. This is pre-Sputnik, pre-Apollo, like nothing metallic, nothing reflective should have been orbiting planet Earth, right? Well... Guess what? There were lights in the sky that they still can't explain. They call these transients. Sometimes they were there, sometimes they weren't. Take a look at this right here. So this is the night sky, uh, September 1952. September uh, 1952 on the 14th, a little bit later. Uh, July 1952, all of these three, they look the same, except for right here. What, what the heck is that? What is this little blob of lights? Uh, it wasn't there, and then it was. This is where things get weirder. These papers found that they were most likely to be seen, of thousands of these, most likely to be seen when nukes were being tested here on Earth and when lots of people reported seeing UFOs. Again, this is before we ever launched a single satellite. Um, this picture right here, the dates around this, the one that we were just talking about, uh, the dates were around a time when UFOs were seen for several hours over Washington, D.C., the White House, the Capitol building, air traffic controllers. They reported seeing them on their radar all around those dates, July 1952. And joining us now is one of the authors of both of those papers, Beatrice Villarroel. She's an astronomer uh, at the Nordic Institute of Theoretical Physis uh, Physics in Stockholm. Uh, Beatrice, thank you so much for being with us. Congratulations uh, on both these papers. Let's start with as simple of a, <laughs> of a question as possible here. These lights in the sky uh, from before Sputnik, were these... Were these artificial objects orbiting Earth before we were ever in space? From what we see, this kind of transients, this kind of transients or flashes that you see, they have a very interesting feature. You usually get these kind of flashes when you have something that is very flat and uh, very reflective, and in a let's say in a geosynchronous orbit at let's say forty two thousand <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Very flat, very reflective in geosynchronous orbit. That like that doesn't sound uh, around the na Earth, natural, yes. right? Yeah. Yes, and and the funny thing is that we can uh, we can show that they are solar reflections because there is a deficit of them in the Earth's shadow at hmm. these altitudes, and that means that uh, at least a fraction of the transients of these flashes that we're looking at, like 30-35%, uh, appear to be due to these solar reflections of such objects. And if we think about that these are before, uh, these transients come from images taken before the first human satellite, they do look pretty artificial. Although I would say that nature can always surprise us with things that we just can't imagine right now. Uh, but I, I gotta ask you, you know, there, there are thousands, tens of thousands of these, if I understand it correctly, maybe even more. Um, what did you think when you started to see a, a correlation between nuclear testing that was going on around that same time, also these UFO sightings that were happening around the United States? That, that correlation, did, did that stick out to you right away? Were you kind of sketched out by it? Well, like the first time when we saw that, it was by coincidence. My friend David Altman, he tells me about uh, Washington uh, Flap, 1952. And then uh, by chance, I discovered that our best candidate when we were looking for a land transients also came from uh, the same Washington 1952 Flap, just from uh, the other weekend, because it was distributed over two weeks. And I was like, hmm, this is weird. And then that, that was what formed the hypothesis that we wanted to test. Is there a correlation in time between these transients 
and uh, UFO events. And we see uh, it's a weak correlation, but it's statistically significant. And we find that. I mean, you strike me as a, a very open-minded scientist, which is what science is supposed to be all about. Uh, but what do you think this might be? Well, uh, I mean, here we can only speculate wildly. If we look at the numbers, like just from the Northern Hemisphere, we have 35,000 transients. I, I don't know how many of these come from what, I mean, one object could give several transients, but it's also possible that we're missing a lot of transients. So uh, I would estimate it to be somewhere between tens of thousands to maybe hundred thousands of objects uh, or hundred thousands of objects or so uh, around the Earth. And artificial is a possibility. Who, who knows, like if it's some ancient space trash from some past civilization or if we are having some uh, probes that came from another planet. I don't know. I hope that someone, uh, some astronomers that are like um, well trained with working with this kind of data. Uh, I'm talking about professional astronomers that will they will want to try to redo the same analysis, both with Palomar but also with other surveys and other mm -hmm. plates. I mean, other plate surveys in particular, because that could really be uh, helpful. Because we need to see if this result can be replicated with other surveys and. And if it is, then it's going to be extremely fun, <laughs> or, or not. <laughs> as a human, as a human on planet Earth, uh, who you know made this discovery, uh, what's the significance to you? I just want to know uh, what these objects are, and I want to know um, why they are here. <laughs> so. If, if, I don't know really what I can say. It's just I'm curious, and that's it. And that is science. Uh, Beatrice, thank you so very much for joining us. And again, congratulations on those papers. They are uh, incredible. We thank you for watching. And remember, stay updated on breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or watch live on our YouTube channel.